Hey there guys, welcome to the meat shop. I'm very excited to make this episode for you because in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to make bacon. Uh, probably the best cured meat that comes off the pig, arguably anyways. Um, and it's dead simple. It's once you learn how to make this bacon, you might never buy store bacon again because it's that easy and it's that much better. Um, it's a dry cured bacon and we're gonna get right into it right away. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks. Okay, here we go guys on how to make bacon. So like I mentioned earlier in the intro, I'm gonna show you how to make dry cured bacon. Um, there's three kinds of bacon. Today we'll do dry cured, and in my opinion, it's the easiest, you guys don't need a whole lot of tools, and you get the best quality out of dry cured bacon. Uh, the other two kinds of bacon, I'll go over the equipment and things you need too, it, it, it's dead simple. Um, but the other two kinds of bacon, or three total, the other two are brined bacon and pump and tumbled bacon. Uh, so I'll just cover them real quickly. I'll maybe do them in another video another time. But the brined bacon is basically you whip up a, a solution. Uh, so in water you mix brown sugar, salt, cure, and cure accelerator. And you take the belly and you brine it. You leave it in there uh, in the refrigerator for a couple of days until the cure penetrates from the brine into the belly, then you smoke it and slice it. Um, it's also pretty good bacon. That's probably the second best option. It's also quite easy. Um, then you have the pump and tumbled bacon. So that's the stuff you get in the grocery stores. And with pump and tumbled bacon, it's the same idea kind of as the brine. They make up a solution with the same four ingredients, salt, brown sugar, cure, cure accelerator, but they usually add phosphates. And what phosphates do is they help water stick to the meat. So they take that solution with the phosphate in it and they pump it into the belly at 15%. So you're paying, they get to sell you water for the price of bacon. Uh, and that's why you start with a piece in the frying pan and it shrinks up. All that water evaporates in your pan. So those are the three kinds of bacon, but we're going to do dry cured bacon, the easiest and best. Um, so equipment you need. It's pretty simple, just a little work area. You don't need a meat shop like this. You can do it on your kitchen counter. A little tub or big plastic bag to hold your belly in. A little something to weigh your spices out in. Uh, you will need a gram scale if you're doing the spice mixing the way I do it. Um, you're gonna need, I don't know if you can see these. We got salt, golden brown sugar, cure, and a cure accelerator. Uh, in this case, I'm using sodium erythorbate. You can use ascorbic acid, um, and there's all sorts of different food grade cure accelerators. Um, but probably the most common two are sodium erythorbate and ascorbic acid. Um, and you'll need a gram scale. So I weighed these bellies out ahead of time and they weighed 14 and a half kilograms, which is 32 pounds. So I'm gonna do three bellies here for you and they're 14 and a half kilograms total. Uh, the reason I have these weighed out, salt and brown sugar, cure and sodium erythorbate is because I do everything, I do all my recipes in grams per kilogram. So, I'm going to give you my dry cured bacon recipe. I will link it or tag it in the description below. Four ingredients. You can get them at any, you can get the salt and brown sugar anywhere. Uh, and then you can get cure and a cure accelerator at any butcher supply shop. But we're going to use salt at 25 grams per kilogram, brown sugar at 20 grams per kilogram, cure. Now when it comes to the cure, um, some recipes call for sodium nitrate or sodium nitrite, which is cure number one, or sorry, um, so the sodium nitrate, that should be more clear, is cure number two. And uh, sodium nitrite is cure number one. And basically the difference is if you were doing something like a salami or a capicola or something like that, you would want to be using cure number two because it takes a long time um, for the curing process to happen. Now, lots of recipes will call for sodium nitrate. So the difference is A-T-E or I-T-E. Sodium nitrate, cure number two, it's for a long, slow cure. Sodium nitrite, 
which is for curing stuff quickly. You can use either on this. I have done it with both. Sodium nitrite works. And I'll talk about the curing time a little further in the video. Um, but you want to use cure at 2.4 grams per kilogram and a cure accelerator at 3.5 grams per kilogram. Um, so basically I took the 14 and a half kilograms and multiplied it by all those things and I got weighted out in my gram scale uh, because you don't, I don't like using the recipes that say, you know, add a tablespoon of this, add a, a cup of salt because Different salts have different densities. They have different weights. If you're using sea salt, or if you're using kosher salt, or if you're using fine table salt, rock salt, whatever. A cup of one does not necessarily weigh the same as another. So weighing your spices out gives you the most consistent product. And I'll do a video on how to formulate recipes. Um, in fact, it might be linked somewhere. So we weighed all that up. This is brown sugar, salt, cure mixture. And we're gonna apply it to our bacons. Um, so you need those ingredients. You obviously need some bellies. You need a gram scale to weigh them out in. And you're gonna need a smoker eventually. So that's the equipment you'll need. A knife, place to work, salt, brown sugar, cure sodium, uh, erythrobate or a cure accelerator, and a couple mixing bowls. Pretty simple. So, We'll dive into it now. I've weighed them out. And you can pick these up anywhere. Your local butcher will have pork bellies for sure. You can get them at Costco, wholesale food places, as always. Um, one thing to make note of though, is when you buy your belly for dry cured bacon, the dry curing process does take a little while. Um, that's one of, the, one of the features of it, I guess you could say. So when I was talking about those other curing processes like a brine and a pump, a pump and tumble, they can cure those in 45 minutes. This one's gonna take about a week. The reason being without moisture, it, that salt, our, our spice mixture is gonna penetrate slowly through the meat. And the rule of thumb is one inch per week. So when you're buying your bellies, the reason I bring this up now is when you're buying your bellies, if you get them from your butcher, they may be skin on. And the salt and brown sugar and cure doesn't really penetrate through the skin. If it does, it penetrates so slow it doesn't count. Now these guys here are skinned bellies. You can tell because this side here, this is the white fat side, it would be on the outside of the, the carcass. And this side in here, you can see where the ribs were. Pull that up there a little closer for you. You can see where the ribs were. This is on the inside of the carcass. So it is skin. There is no pork skin on this side. So that means when I put my cure mixture on, it is gonna have salt, cure, sugar solution penetrating from this side and this side. So technically you could probably do it in about five days because it's only about, you know, it's just over an inch thick, but give it seven days as a rule of thumb per inch. So does that make sense? If, you, if, this had a, if this was two inches thick, <coughs> you'd want to give it 14 days. Um, since it's skinned, you could probably get away with 10. But if this, had, if this side had a skin on it still, and it was two inches thick, you would definitely need to give it 14 days because it would be only coming from one side. Also, if they're really fatty bellies, uh, the cure penetrates slower through fat. So you maybe want to just assess your belly and you know, there's no harm really giving it a couple extra days. You usually can get away with seven. If they're skinned and they're you know, not overly fatty, if they're a little bit fatty, give them 10. You're going to store them in your refrigerator the whole time. So you shouldn't have too much bacteria growth. You shouldn't run into spoilage problems. Get these guys unwrapped. These guys are just wrapped. Lots of times they come cryovac'd. These guys are cold. Cold is good. Cold meat is good. So this process here, guys, is really simple. Like I said, I took my recipe, <coughs> excuse me, 25 grams of salt, 20 grams of brown sugar, 2.4 grams of cure, and today I'm using cure number one, sodium nitrite. Um, 
and uh, 3.5 grams of sodium erythrobate. And to expand on that cure, cure number one versus cure number two, just a little bit more, basically the difference between sodium nitrate and nitrite is sodium nitrate is just kind of one step further down the chemical reaction process to cured meats. So it goes basically sodium nitrate reacts with the bacteria and things in the meat, uh, the hemoglobin and myoglobin, and then it, it creates a, the little bit of acidity that's naturally in meat. It creates nitrite. So sodium nitrate will create nitrite. Sodium nitrite uh, forms uh, nitric oxide, which reacts with the myoglobin in the meat, and it forms nitrosimoglobins. So that, and that's what pink cured meat is. Not really a rel relevant to the home butcher, but that's basically what it is. Nitrate's just one step further away. So you can get away with sodium nitrate. Don't get too hung up on the cure. Cure number one or cure number two. Preg powder number one, preg powder number two. It will work. So we weigh that out using that recipe. We got it here. And all you do is you wanna make sure you use this whole thing up on these bellies. You guys can't see that one. Got three bellies here. Um, and this recipe I have tuned in relatively well. It's, it's pretty well received. It's not too salty. It's not too sugary. Um, and you basically want to make sure you use all this up. Uh, one reason being you want to make sure you use all this up is because the USDA and the CFIA only want you to have 120 parts per million of cure in your, in your bacon because you fry it and supposedly it causes carcinogens when you fry sodium nitrites cures, supposedly. So this will give you that number. For homemaking, it doesn't matter. If you're actually are running a butcher store, they will come in and check your formulas and this one will keep you safe. So basically, yeah, you just dead simple, big handfuls, spread it on, nice and even. You can pat the bellies down a little bit if they're really wet, if they got a lot of uh, the myoglobin and blood and stuff in it from the vacuum package bag. These guys aren't bad, so you don't have to pat them down. But also that little bit of moisture doesn't hurt because it helps the salt and sugar and cure penetrate into the, into the belly. You don't want to miss the sides here. See that? Oh yeah. So you want to get the sides. And like I said, guys, the rule of thumb is an inch per week. So these guys are like right at an inch. So these guys will be, I will give them seven days, but since they're skin, that cure will be coming in from both sides. So really, technically, you'd be pretty darn close at three and a half days, four days, but it doesn't hurt. Just give them that week. Delay of gratification. It's worth it. I usually pat it in a bit. And that, it's going to cure a little bit slower from this fat side. And if you guys had, these weren't skin, say you picked them up from a butcher store and they still had the rind on. And by the way guys, the pork belly basically comes, uh, they break it between the third and fourth, or fourth and fifth rib on a pig. And it goes kind of down to right below where the leg starts. It includes kind of down the side here and that's the belly. It's, it's the diaphragm, they use it for breathing lots and stuff. So that's why it's sliced relatively thin. Okay, you flip them over and give them a good healthy shot again on the bottom side so that the cure penetrates from both sides. And we have an even salt sugar cure, cure accelerator distribution on our pieces of meat. And like we're one third of the way done making bacon already. It's dead simple. Salt, brown sugar, Cure, Cure Accelerator. Pick some nice bellies from somewhere as you trust. And the other thing, guys, is I forgot to even mention up until this point how much cheaper this is. You guys are going to make the stuff that they sell for $10 a pound, and you can buy bellies for like, you can buy like the, the top quality bellies for like $4.50, $5.50 a pound up here in Canada. Of course, everywhere is going to be a little bit different. But, uh, 
But uh, you can pick pork bellies up at Costco on sale sometimes for like $2 a pound. And you can dry cure them and then you're eating that nice bacon that they're selling for like $10 a pound. Okay, so make sure I get all that salt on there. Give it a little pat down again. Now, if you guys don't have a walk-in cooler like me or don't, you don't want to store, so you don't have an extra fridge to store this in because that's what we're going to put the bellies in today. You can put them in Ziploc bags and keep them in your crisper. You can cut them in half at this point and fold them and it's not going to affect your end product. Um, if you have a vacuum packager, the vacuum packager actually accelerates the curing process because you, when you vacuum it, it kind of opens up between the fibers, if the pores of the meat, if you will, and it will help the salt go through a little bit quicker. But uh, the easiest, we're just going to do it as easy as possible. So we rub them down and I just store them in here and make sure I don't miss any of this cure and stuff. It's not going to make it too salty, guys. Trust me, it's a pretty good recipe. I'll link it below, like I said. Make sure that gets on there. And also, if you want, during the curing process, you don't really have to, but that bottom one, this, is, this salt is going to pull moisture out of the bacon. And you're going to get a salty, sugary, bloody, well, it's actually myoglobin and hemoglobin, uh, solution at the bottom of your little pan or at the bottom of your Ziploc bag. And if you like, were like concerned, you can take that bottom belly and swap it out with the top belly, or flip your belly over if you're only doing one. But it's it's I you know I have, I don't do that anymore because I really don't find it makes a big difference in the end product. I mean it's this stuff is so simple, guys. It's just rub this solution on it and leave it alone for seven days. Okay. <clears throat> so now I'm just gonna pop this in the cooler. I'll write the date on it when I cured it and uh, wait seven days. So I will see you guys in seven days on smoking the bacon, part two. One third done, second third coming up. Okay guys, with the magic power of editing, a week has gone by and these bellies have been curing for a week. Um, I decided to do, I got a bunch of other bellies on the go, so we got your bellies in here along with a couple other ones. We're gonna smoke them all at the same time. Um, I have mine on racks. You can do yours on sticks. Uh, they have such things as bacon hooks. So it's basically a, a hook. I don't have one to show you, unfortunately, but it's kind of like a meat hook like this, except there's multiple, I focus on the meat hook. There's multiple hooks. And uh, you basically push them into the belly and then you hang them and air circulates all around them. Uh, the pro to that is you kind of get more air circulation around it and it dries out quicker for doing big batches. But if you're doing this at home, you're probably only going to be doing like one to three to maybe five bellies at a time anyways. So a raft like this isn't going to affect your end product. The, the key is, well, we'll go over the, the smoking steps, but before we get to that, um, when you pulled it out, I have one left here. It's at the bottom of the solution, so it's kind of, it's, you can see it dripping there because the, uh, the salt and stuff has pulled moisture out of the meat. But the top couple, or if you're only doing one, you might find there's just a little bit of residual salt and brown sugar off. And if you find that, uh, all you have to do, if you even find it, is just get a little cold water and just rinse that excess salt off. And you're good to go. Um, you want to make sure when you rinse them that in your smoking process you give them adequate drying time because smoke adheres to a, like a tacky, not completely dry dry, but like a tacky surface much better than if I was to stick this into a smoking smokehouse right now. The smoke wouldn't apply to the outside of the bacon as much. So I know you guys are probably thinking like, well, I don't got a big smokehouse like this. This smokehouse has some features. So I kept one belly out. I'm going to do it on the Traeger for you guys because it's going to be more relatable. But the process is the same. There's basically three steps to smoking bacon. One, you're going to dry it off because there's going to be a little bit of moisture and stuff on the outside. So you want it to dry it until it becomes tacky. And we do that at a real low temperature. Um, this smokehouse, the lowest it goes is 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so basically you can do that or put a fan on it. Um, 
till it dries and that takes about an hour. So I'm going to do my first step is going to be 150 degrees Fahrenheit with the fan on, dampers open for an hour. Then I'm going to apply smoke for another hour at about 155. I start creeping the temperature up. What type of smoke are you using, Duncan? I'm using hickory. I like hickory the best. It works, it's the most versatile for the, all, everything I do in the shop. But you, if you got other stuff at home, you can experiment away. You can use apple, you can use pecan, you can use cherry. Um, you don't want to use like the super aggressive woods like oak or you can use maple. Maple's another good one. Uh, I find, well, it depends on how you like your bacon. Maybe you like really smoky bacon and, and uh, use some of that aggressive stuff then. But hickory is what I'm using today. So step one, dry 150 for an hour. Step two, smoke. Uh, I usually smoke, the smoking process takes about an hour and a half. Uh, once, once my pan's empty there, I got a little smoke pan in the bottom. So it's about an hour and a half of hickory. And then I probe them. This has a little, my smokehouse has a little attached probe. If not, you're going to want to have a, a thermometer. I think I forgot that in the things you'll need less. So you'll need a thermometer. Um, and you'll probe the largest belly in the thickest part because you want to bring it up to 150, or sorry, 135 internal temperature. And I'm usually doing that at 175 to 180 because I don't want, you don't want to smoke bacon hot, hot, like 200. You're going to start rendering some of the fat out and then you're going to have grease pile up in the bottom of your smokehouse. You want to keep that in, in the bacon, that's flavor. You, you, that bacon fat flavor, is, it's good, man. You don't want, to be, don't want to be having that drip out. So you take your probe, insert into the thickest belly at the thickest point until it hits an internal temperature of 135. 135 activates that sodium nitrate, that cure, that nitrosimoglobins that we, we that occurred during the curing process over the last week, and it kills parasites. It's going to get rid of, I believe 135 is the number that gets rid of trigonosis if you have an outdoor pig. So we will start that process now. Thickest belly, thickest part. And if, if you have a big smokehouse like this, you want to pick the cool spot. My smokehouse cool spots off to this side. Minor detail if you're doing three or four bellies at home. So dry about an hour till it's tacky on the outside. Then smoke. I smoke mine for about an hour and a half, two hours with hickory at about 155. Then the final step is cook. We cook to an internal temperature of 135 at about 175 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit because we don't want to render the fat out. And I'll show you guys what each one of those steps look like on the Traeger because it'll probably be more relatable for what you're doing at home. Okay guys, one last little treat for you here before I go to the Traeger and show you how to do it there. Um, so this is one of the bellies that's been in the fridge for seven days. Uh, I should have mentioned the temperature range. You want to store them between zero degrees Celsius and five degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 40 degrees Fahrenheit for seven days. Uh, so he's been in there seven days. We're about to take him to the Traeger and uh, this is something you guys can do to your bellies. It's really kind of cool. So this is just going to be a dry cured bacon in the end. Simple, nothing to it. But what you can do is uh, I'm going to cut this guy in half because it's not going to affect my end product. I'm going to show you guys the two different products in the end. But if you want to, you can flavor your bacons. You don't want to be adding any salt to it though at this point because it's got enough salt in it. So I have, can you see that? Black pepper. This is going to, I'm going to make a peppered bacon. So you basically just, uh, Sprinkle it over your bacon. When I, use, when I make peppered bacon, I use kind of a little bit coarser crack. You don't want like a real fine mesh, otherwise it's just kind of, kind of hot. Cut down, other side. Nice, good, even coat. And uh, that's how easy it is to make peppered bacon. So we got dry cured bacon and then you just add pepper to it right before you smoke. Not during the curing process, not during the curing process, just before you smoke. There you go. And we got peppered bacon and dry cured bacon. Now I'm gonna throw these on the Traeger. 
Okay there guys, if you're doing this at home, this might be something that you are more used to doing or more used to using. Maybe it's a Bradley little chamber smoker, but uh, the idea is still gonna be the same. The first step's gonna be kind of a, a lower temperature dry, then you're gonna do a smoke and then you do a cook. Uh, I just realized my Traeger only goes down to 165. So if you're using a Traeger, do it at 165, but if you can, do it like a little bit lower than that, 150 for the drying step. And then uh, I'm not too worried about it though, because uh, it's gonna take a while for it to come up temperature and uh, you can pat your bellies dry before you get them loaded. Uh, so that smoke adheres to them. So I'll just fire it up. I got my bellies patted off. And I'll pop them in here and I'll come check on them after about two hours. You don't need to mess them or anything like that. You're not making pork belly burn tens. We're making bacon. So pop them in and uh, come check on them in two hours. Okay guys, so two hours has gone by. The Traeger is rolling smoke. I'm not sure if you can see it smoking there. I got it set at 165, which was as low as it could go. The internal temperature of the belly is 115. We're gonna shoot for 135 in the end, but it's been two hours. I'm just gonna look at them here. And if you can avoid opening the lid too much, uh, that's good. But we'll just have a quick look at them here. So the color's starting to come on them. Looks really good. There's the peppered guy. And I'm gonna bump the temperature up and they should get a little bit uh, of that darker smoked color, a little more brown hickory looking. So I'm just gonna close them back up. So that was our first two stages, dry and then smoke. Now we're just gonna bring it up to, oh, that went up quick, to 180. It's because it seems to be about five degrees behind. So now it's gonna, I'm gonna cook it at 180 till that internal temperature hits 135. And we'll go check on the ones in the smokehouse in the meat shop too. Okay there guys, I'm back in the meat shop. We just checked the Traeger one, and it's the same process. Uh, these have been in for two hours. We're just starting the smoke. I don't usually open this one. I know how to, the process works with this one quite well, so I don't have to check on it. But I'll open it up and show it for you guys. Uh, there should be smoke rolling right now, because uh, we're at the end of the second hour, so the hickory should be smoking still. And the color of the belly should be going from that kind of pale raw meat look to starting to brown up uh, like bacon, starting to, that smoke starting to adhere. So we'll just check this quick. Whew, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see that. I'll bring it in a little closer for you. Ugh, getting smoked out, but see they're starting to take on <coughs> that little bit a hickory or smoke is starting to get on these guys here too. So now we're just gonna bump it up. <coughs> Getting smoked out here, guys. We're just gonna bump it up to about 180 until we get that internal temperature of 135. Okay, guys, update, it is done. It's at 137, so it's two degrees over 135, which isn't a big deal. Even if you guys get it up to 140, it's not a big deal. So we'll just open these up and have a look at them. Yeah, that's a nice, dark, smoky color. There's our peppered one. Probes in the deepest part of the biggest bacon. So now I'm just gonna pull these off, guys, and put them on a clean, or in a clean tote in the cooler overnight and we'll slice them tomorrow. Stay tuned for that. All right guys, my smokehouse alarm just went off. So here's the, the bellies from the smokehouse that got the same steps. Uh, they dried at 150 for about an hour, got smoked at 155 for about, uh, let's see if I get that to focus. Got smoked at about 155 for about an hour and a half. I cranked them up to 180 and they got that nice yeah they got went from that kind of pale to mahogany color same as the ones that come off the trigger same process so it doesn't really matter what you're using process is the same now same as the uh, Traeger bacon I will take this pop it in the cooler to cool down overnight and we will slice it for step three of three tomorrow all right we are at the third and final step I have the bacons that I pulled off the Traeger yesterday, from yesterday that we smoked, cooled them down in the fridge overnight. 
One thing I should have mentioned is you don't want to stack these on top of one another when you're cooling them because uh, the space that isn't going to get the air circulation is going to have a bit of discoloration on it. Um, like you don't want to stack them on weather like that because the middle part won't cool down in time. But you see here we got that nice mahogany color on them from yesterday. Got a good smoke on them. That nice dark tan color, mahogany. And uh, today all you got to do, easy enough, is you just need a cutting board. Here's our peppered bacon from yesterday. Mm. Is slice them. Slice them and package them. Um, if you have a, a meat slicer, it's way easier. You're gonna get a way more consistent product. I have one in the back there, but we'll cut these by hand. And all you, these knives are make it a lot easier, a bigger knife, but you can get away with these. And all you wanna do is just cut it into whatever size bacon you like. If you like a thick cut, cut it a little thicker. Well, let's give you, do a couple slices off this peppered one to show you guys what kind of product we have made. All right. Oh, there it is, guys. The dry cured bacon. Um, one thing when you're slicing into this you wanna look for is you wanna make sure that it is pink all the way through. If you have little gray spots or green spots, they call them, that means you didn't give your ham, or sorry, your bacon quite enough time to cure. It probably needed one or two more days. But it's not, it's not gonna kill you. It's not a big deal, just fry your bacon. Um, so we cooked this to 135 yesterday, so that means this is only a partially cooked product. So you can't eat this raw. We can, I guess, if you want, but it should be cooked. So if this is something you fry in the frying pan, or what have you now with your eggs and pancakes, or however you guys eat your bacon. But yeah, all that we do now is just slice however thick you want your bacon. And it looks like we, we give it enough time. There's no gray spots in this. So salt, brown sugar, cure sodium erythrobate, seven days, did the trick. So I'll slice this stuff all up here, guys. And uh, we'll go over the steps real quick when I'm done. All right, so here we go, the final product. Here's all our sliced bacon. Slice it up for you guys. These are in piles here, so. And this is all the bacon off one belly. So, this is our end product. Uh, I've backpacked a little bit up here for you guys. Just to give you an idea of how you can package them, or you guys can stick them in Ziploc bags, suck them up real tight, but back packaging in them gets you the longest shelf life for sure. Uh, since it's a dry cured bacon, it's probably 35 to 45 days, depending on how clean your setup is, in a vacuum package, fresh in the fridge, unopened. Oh, or probably a year and a half in the freezer, so long as the seal doesn't break on the vacuum packages. But here it is, guys. Beautiful, all of it's cured all the way through. Looks real good. And so I'll just go over the, the steps one more time with you. So was, we did it in kind of three parts. One was seasoning the bacon, two was smoking, and three was slicing and packaging. So the important parts for seasoning, you use that spice recipe I'm gonna link down below. Uh, you give it an inch per week when we're doing a dry rub because we're not adding any moisture. In fact, we probably would have sucked a little bit of moisture out of these. I'm not sure if I made point of this uh, in part one, but you're not gonna find it's not gonna shrink very much compared to the store bacon because we pulled some moisture out with that dry cure. That salt solution pulled it out of the meat. So you apply our, our spice mix, wait probably seven days or 10, depending on the thickness. Two, step two, we smoke it, 150 for about an hour to dry it. Then we put smoke on it for an hour and a half at a minimum, uh, up to however many hours you want, four hours if you want really smoky bacon. Uh, and then we, as we, we slowly bring the temperature up of the smokehouse to I do about 185 to, at the highest until our internal temperature hits 135. If you go over a little bit, it doesn't really matter, but you wanna hit at least 135. And we'll take them out, cool them in the, in the refrigerator between zero and five, 32 and 40 overnight, uh, making sure that they're not stacked one on top of the other so that air can circulate around them and cool them right down. It helps uh, get, keep that nice color that smoky mahogany tan color on the outside. 
Then we slice, package, and enjoy. You guys don't need me to tell you how to cook bacon, I'm sure. So hopefully you guys like this video. I'm gonna share the information down below. Uh, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share with some friends or a Facebook page. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy the bacon. That's it for this one. Thanks again.